so how do you like my attire? Huh? Ek like most nou hot vandag. Ne? So, don't you want to take a picture with me? Put it on your Facebook page, you know, just like... That's my pastor. <laughs> huh? He looks like this every day. Huh? <laughs> I'm all chauffeur, Poppy. All chauffeur. We orange and we believe in orange. This was actually my, you, you'll see, say Mong Kong hospital project. That was uh, one of the missions I did, or, or I was part of in Lesotho, building a hospital there for the community. So uh, this was quite a few years ago. And, and we all pro <coughs> protested when they gave us orange. We were like, nee, yes, Paul's Murray, come on. Yeah, we, we, we can just book in there. You know, if I walk in there, like, how did you escape, champ? <laughs> what is going on here? No more as a belief, but... But isn't this the truth? This is not the pictures we see on social media. They want to know why it's just the left knee. You see, it bends more than the other one. Okay, I don't know why it's the left knee. Maybe there was an accident somewhere doing something, I don't know. So if you know me, if you don't know me, then, then, then I'll tell you I'm, I'm quite a practical person. I pay for very little because I do it myself, not because I'm stingy. Uh, I, I, I love the challenge, especially if I don't know how to do something, then, then all my lights goes on and I try and figure it out. If I mess it up, then I pay. <laughs> Sorry, correction, then she pays. <laughs> From our budget, and then things are, are sorted. So, question, is there, are there people that are thirsty here this morning? Then you'll be glad to know that my sermon title will give you an idea of what you can do if that will just appear <laughs> suddenly. I lost my powers. There's a hand raised. We see that hand. Take a drink. Take a drink. Now, now this is not going to a kruh. All right. So let's just, let's just now sort this out. Okay. If, if, you, if, if someone says to you, let's go for a drink, everybody's thinking, you nasty, nasty, you know, where do we stop? You know, my first question is, what for you for the good? Because, uh, yo, it's uh, not that I hang out in bars, but maybe I should. Maybe that's where the lost people are. I don't know. So, are you thirsty this morning? Are you really thirsty? How did you come dressed this morning to church? Nah, you, you all got very, uh, look very nice, but how did you come dressed spiritually this morning? What attire do you have on? Empty. Okay, because he's thirsty. Right, good stuff. But you truly come empty. Did, or did you come, you know, when you walked through the doors, it was more a thing of, we made it. You know, kids are alive. We're alive. Everybody's alive. You know, we are here. Honey, we made it. How did you arrive here? Yeah, how do you arrive at work? When you get up in the morning, Monday through Friday, how do you arrive at work? What attire do you have on? Yeah, I've seen this. John works in his pajamas. It's quite scary if you go deliver anything there. It's like, oh, champ, yeah, sensor, sensor. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Yeah, it's quite shocking. We'll, wa we'll wait five minutes later, longer, champ. Just, you know, that fluffy shoes and everything. And he's, he's always enthusiastic. It's like, hey, so play it as he's all. Yeah, come on. What do you need? <laughs> all right, so I want to read Isaiah 55, 1 to 3. And it starts off like this. It goes, ho! Oh! Ho! Oh! Everybody say, ho! Oh. No, 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 that was lame. Just do it again. Oh. No, this corner, this corner, right. Now, everybody. Oh. Okay, that's almost there. Another time. Oh. Right, that's, why does he start with ho? Oh? Because he's Christmas father. We just need to repeat, ho, ho, ho. Maybe he wants our attention. So, have you ever walked in at someone's house and go, ho? Oh. Huh? <laughs> oh, it's Cape Town. Hush! 
I'll say, I'll say, horse. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, someone's wife is going to go, Ho! And his uh, husband's going to jump out of bed thinking there's stuff happening. He said, oh, do you want coffee? <laughs> so he starts off trying to get our attention here. And I want you to see that. He wants to grab your attention because what is following is important. Okay? And he goes, everyone. So the invitation on immediately is broad. Invitation is not a personal one. The invitation is used. He says, everyone who thirsts. Now, I don't know how thirsty you've been. I'm thirsty and I don't have water. Can I have some water? Okay, I've, uh, she, she came prepared. Everyone who thirsts, everyone who thirsts, how thirsty are you? What is quenching your thirst if you are not thirsty? What is withholding you from actually thirsting? What well are you drinking from? So he says, okay, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And who has no money? Man, Eddie Boruk is good. Thank you. This is good news for everybody who has no money. He says, buy and eat. Yay! No. He was even glad. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. This sounds like a good South Africa. Huh? <laughs> the invitation is to come to the water. Even if you have nothing. In other words, you're arriving because you are thirsty. Not because you are able to bring something to the table. And that rhymed, so it must be true. If I listen to um, Lego movie, nah? it's true when it rhymes. Come, buy wine. Again, what are, what, are, what are we desiring? What are we pursuing? You know, what fountain are we drinking from? If I'm not thirsty, what is the fountain that quenches me? And maybe you're drinking from a good fountain, that's a good thing. And then verse 2 continues, he says, Why do you weigh silver for what is not bread? And you labor for what never satisfies. Listen carefully to me. Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Why do you weigh silver? Why do you pursue stuff that is temporal? You know, you, you're spending your stuff which has got no eternal value. You are pursuing stuff that doesn't satisfy. And I don't know about you, but I can testify the stuff that I've pursued in the past, that the moment you get it, you're like, so what was that about? I spend time, effort, money, and then you get there and you think, okay, it looked better from the other side. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What have I worked for? What have I sacrificed the time and the effort and everything for? And then you get there and it's empty. It's nothing. It's, it doesn't satisfy. And then verse 3 says, bow down your ear. Just hold your ear for a moment. Just to remind you where it is. <laughs> huh? What was this made for? <laughs> no, no, your mom said it's ornaments. <laughs> it's just an attachment that hangs here. You know, that, 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 yeah. <laughs> for the teachers it was handles. No, hey, call it Jay. No? Bow down your ear and come to me. Here. Yeah. So you have this, you have this, this coming to him. 
you, you're actually bowing down because you are not looking at anything else. So there's a focus. There's, I'm coming to here. It's almost like, you know, if she wants to whisper something in my ear, you know, I, I'm like, oh. <laughs> he that finds a wife, man, finds a good thing. Bow down your ear and come to me, he says, and your soul shall live. Oh man, when we come to him, when we bow down and we hear him, everything comes alive. Everything comes alive. I, I, I just live. Things change. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of of David. You see, God sent His only Son to die for us. He crossed the divide. He came to us. And now He wants to speak to us. He wants to instruct us. He wants to teach us. He wants to show us the stuff that is not temporal, that has eternal value. He wants to, to make us prosper. He wants to bring us to that place where we thirst no more. And then, I want to read to us Ephesians 4. Because this is, I guess, something that we do. And in, 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 in verse 22, Ephesians 4, 22 says this. For you ought to put off the old man according to your way of living before, who is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So he says, put off the old man. Now I've got my old man on today. How, how is your life different from last year in terms of holiness, in terms of pursuing God, in terms of walking with Him? What has changed? So here's the, here's the truth. I think when we look at the old man, you know, we, we actually like the old man because it's functional. This is very functional. I could, I could do a few crazy things in this and not worry. Clearly. I've been there. You can see I've painted. Which is something I hate. Masty. But we wear our old man proudly. Now I'm going to just put this chair here because, because I have to do a few things this morning. Is that okay? Right, so he says, put off the old, old man. So the first thing I need to do is undress. <laughs> that one says, strip yourself <laughs> of your former nature. nature. So I'm stripping myself now. Now, you would notice, this takes a bit of effort. Yeah. All right, so... Just hang on a second because you know I'm just taking off my old man. It takes a bit of time. Yeah. Ah, say, come on. Front row will now feel a different anointing. We just we just hope they will make it. Ah, you see, and wh what I do is I, I actually present my old man. This is who I used to be. It's tank slightly. Everybody's concerned. Will the other one stay? Ah, here I am. Sure. Yeah. Ah, say. All right. And then he continues. He says this. And be renewed. So I need to. I need to be. What does the amplified say? Why is there a constantly in there? Be constantly renewed. So, so, so I must be renewed in the spirit of my flesh. Oh. Oh, so my brain is involved here. Oh, shucks, huh? Yes, thinking, thinking is a thing. 
right? So, so he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see, Romans says that we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yeah? And sometimes we think just by undressing it, that I'll be fine. And it's okay. You know, Lord, you saved me. I'm good. I'm good. And you know, I'm going to die now. It's okay. And uh, you know, hopefully I'll make it to heaven. Yeah? I'll, I'll see my in the This is new socks. All right, so... And then he says, and you should put on the new man. Put. <sighs> this is not going to stay on for very long. By the way, do we need the aircons on? Are you guys okay? Yeah. Okay. You see, I need to put on the new man. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Okay, this is, this is not the, you know, if my sons were here, I would now get Paxla because this is, this is not good. Um, I'm, I'm not, you know, Jamal will take me out because the clothes are not. Ah, here help me now. He's like near Papa. And he, put on you see if i put on the new man something changes no wait 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 you see in heaven we will wear fellies because it's heaven you know there nothing else will do it's fellies let me just tie them because i don't want to fall and then we have another gemorsje this morning. Right. Okay. okay. So who wants a photo of me now? Now you just want photos. No, 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 no. Now I'm good enough. Because I've gotten rid of some stuff. No, no one wants to work with this boy key. It's, it's me and him. <laughs> okay, I can't see. So I'm just going to take that one. Just now we have an accident. Okay. Okay, so he says, you should put on the new man. Did you see it was slightly bit of effort? It's deliberate. I have to change. A few things and the reality is please excuse me I'm just gonna take this thing off otherwise it's gonna become a serious weight loss program up here and uh, which might be a good thing this is I'll just take this off because it's interfering with the mic okay you should put on the new man who according to who to God was created in righteousness and true holiness consider what righteousness and true holiness means what does it mean because this is God's desire for us is righteousness and for us to walk in holiness now unfortunately what we try and do is we put on the new man eh? Eh? and then we go like some of the old stuff uh, so I'm now a new man, but, but, but I like this because it's orange, <laughs> you know, and then, and then what I try and do is I try and put some of my old man back over my new man. Yeah. You see, I'm going to, okay, no, I won't do that now. <laughs> you see, because we, we like the old stuff, the old way of living, the things we used to do. We suddenly want to try and fit that into the new man. But the new man, God says, is righteous and is holy. And that nothing that was part of my old life can fit into the new life. And we should stop trying. You see, because He is calling us into a newness of life. You are a new creation. Just remind yourself quickly. Say to yourself, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. Say it like you believe it. I'm a new creation. 
Yeah, because you see, you are new. You are no longer old. So stop trying to live like the old. You see, because God has got so much more in store for us in the new. And yes, the honest truth that I think is that we are simply scratching the surface in our walk with God. We had the, the um, destiny encounter yesterday and, and I'm again just so, I was so aware of God's plans for me and how there's so much more that still needs to be done. How even in the time that I've served him up to now, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I haven't even started it feels like that there's so much more to be done in his kingdom. And that I can, when I put on the new man, when I get rid of the old, I am able to do that. But it's when I try and cling to the old, old ways of doing, old ways of thinking, old habits, you know. But none of you have habits, no. Okay, so, so, so none of us have here have issues that, that simply, simply because you're, you, you, know, you used to do it, it's okay to still do it, but, but it's actually part of the old man. And I try and fit it into the new man, you know, and man, I'll tailor make it. I'll chop it, change it, color it in. I'll do whatever it takes to try and make it fit in the new man. And, and if you're quite honest, you'll see that that little thing continues to scratch you. It never sits well. You know, when, you, when you've got clothes that works, it works. But when you, you, you know your sock when it turns around, you've got that little line. Now, and that little line in your shoe sits like it shouldn't. You can look good, man. And everyone's like, what's wrong with you? No, man, no, I'm fine. But that little line has the power to ruin a day. By the time you get home, it's not just a line, there's a small blister. And that blister stays. And it's the same way then when, when you take stuff of the old man, we try and fit it into the new, new man. When, it, when we take stuff from our old life, when we fit it into the kingdom, it simply doesn't fit. And you will encounter places where when suddenly people confront you with that thing, it's like, what's that? And you go like, no, it's good. <laughs> Fits perfectly. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> yeah, but you, you've got a bit of a twitch there. No, 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 no. I'm good, man. Good. And we fail to deal with this. What does scripture say? It's the small things. The little foxes that ruin stuff in our lives. And it actually affects our thirst. A small things will hinder you from truly being thirsty for what God has in store. It distracts you. It pulls you away. Maybe you, you're just getting on with Christ. You know, things are looking good and then you get that twitch again. And you know, ooh, what is that? And then instead of justifying it, you should be, Father, what do I need to do? And then they'll say, and, and listen, when God speaks to you and He says, get rid of the old stuff, That we obey. But so often we go, it's nice old stuff. Let's not do that. Jeremiah 2.13 says this, For my people have committed two evils. God comes to them and he says to them, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. The fountain of living water. <coughs> and they have hewed out cisterns for themselves broken systems that can hold no water. You see, he accuses them of not coming to him, of rejecting him, forsaking him. And then he says, and now you're trying to fix it yourself. You're trying to make plans, build systems to try and hold water which it can't. And I can imagine God's heart says, why are you doing that? When I am the fountain of life. Why don't you come drink from me. 
the living waters. In the same way, when Jesus encountered that woman at the well, he says to her, listen, you can drink of this water all you want. You'll continue to thirst. But if you drink from the water that I have, you will never thirst again. And she goes, can I have that water, please? So can we reposition ourselves at the fountain of living water? Let's stop trying. And it's an invitation to you and me by God is to stop trying to do our own things and to just trust Him fully. Psalm 36 or 63, one says this, O oh God, this is David speaking, you are my God. I will seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. He's declaring this. He's, 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 he's making it known what is going on in his soul, that his soul is thirsty for God. That he is, he, man, he's in that space where, where if he doesn't get water now, he'll die. You know, he's, he's thirsty for God. And in the Psalms, we see it so often where he communicates this, that, Lord, I thirst for you. As the deer pants for the water, man, I want you. That's why I asked the question, how thirsty have you come here today? How thirsty are you going tomorrow to work every day of your life? My flesh longs for you uh, as in a dry and thirsty land where, there, where no water is. So I have seen you in the holy place, seeing your power and your glory. When we were in the Richtersveld, well, the Richtersveld at least has the, the Orange River there, but the Tankwa Karoo, when we were there, it is crazy how there is no water. It's crazy. And to see that people actually live there blows my mind. But you see, when you are there, you realize the importance of water. When he's in the dry and thirsty land and he sees there's no water, then Father, I long for you. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in places where where it's dry and the invitation stands, Lord, come, to, oh, my son, my daughter, come to me, the fountain of living water. And that's what we're going to do this morning. We want to come to the fountain of living water. We want to see God in His holiest place. We want to see His power. How thirsty are we for His power and His glory and His majesty? Not just to happen here on a Sunday, but to move with us through the, holy, uh, the whole week. To see that glory being made manifest wherever we go. Isaiah 35, 1 to 7 says this, The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. Why? The desert shall rejoice and blossom like a uh, chorus. Corker, what? Crocus, sorry. So why does it rejoice? Okay. It shall blossom. Why does the desert blossom? Why does the desert blossom and rejoice with joy and singing? The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Why do they blossom? Because they see the glory of God, the majesty of God. You know, there's a place where we should just, you know, start focusing on Him, stare at God, be in His presence where we continually focus on Him, that everything else will disappear because we are in awe of him strengthen the weak hands make firm the feeble knees is that now okay all right and then verse 4 it says say to those who have anxious hearts be strong not sure how your heart is this morning but if your heart is anxious i wanted to say to you be strong fear not Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with a recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. They shall, the, the, then shall the lame man leap like a deer. I've never seen that. That will be awesome. The tongue of the mute will sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Can you see the supernatural change of the environment when the glory of God is in the place? 
That is, I mean, the, the, the burning sand becomes a pool. The very thing that, that, that hinders you now becomes the very thing that God will use even to satisfy you. That there is life, that there is abundance, that the glory of God just changes everything. And, and I want to say to you, you know, if you, you in your walk with God, if, it, if things are difficult, just stare at Him. Just come into His presence, to the fountain of living water, so that He will change everything that is around you. Can I just say there, not on your timing. Because sometimes we come before Him and say, God, I've got this issue, and we expect... Father, one minute, ready, go. <laughs> you see, because God is still God. But you see, like that land, I want to I wanna thirst for Him. I want to I wanna let Him change everything. I want to let His glory and His power and His majesty just come in and transform everything. Isaiah 44, 1 says this, But now hear, O Jacob, my servant Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you in the womb and will help you. Can you hear that? That God has formed you and helped you. And he says, Fear not, O Jacob. Fear not, O Shofar Brackenfell. Fear not, Johannes and Chris, whom I have chosen. You are chosen. We are a chosen generation. We are His royal priesthood. He has set us apart for His good works. You are not some random person. You are called by His name. Okay? For I will pour water on a thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. That's what we can desire. That's what God wants to do in our lives, even right now in the day, is He wants to flood us with His presence, with His glory. That dry, dry ground become life. When we did the destiny encounter, one of the, uh, the, the visions that were there is this, just this absolute cracked ground that was there and, and, and this water just filling up the cracks. You know, what happens when a dry and thirsty land gets water, life. Life springs up. That water, that fountain. You see, when the, when the fountain of God is strong in my life, there is life. You know, where there used to be dryness, where there used to be deadness, suddenly things change. And here's the incredible thing. When, when we encounter God in this way, and God moves in our lives like that, it's the other people around us that also benefit. Because we have life. Because there is life in each one of us. John 7, verse uh, 37 to 39 says this. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If everyone thirsts, let him come and drink. Again, was the invitation personal? The every invitation is for everyone. Can I ask the band to, to come up? Nicole, please. Everyone who thirsts. If anyone... Th there's an if. Are you thirsty this morning? If you are thirsty, come. If you are thirsty, come and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture says... Uh, scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You know, we quote the scripture so often. Can we experience it and walk in it? Now this, he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. In the meantime, Jesus has been glorified. The Holy Spirit has come. Saints, do you realize that we can have more? That we can have more. 